been working on the sheer design for a couple of classes so far, and uh, I asked you, I remember that I asked you last class to read the lecture notes before this class. To be honest, if you didn't read the lecture notes, this class will not be really a, a enjoyable class. You need to read the material. Uh, so what we've covered so, uh, so far is this uh, equation here is our main design equation in this chapter. Uh, again, you can read it in plain English as the shear capacity of your beam has two different components. One shear, one component is by concrete. Whatever left from the concrete uncracked, it will contribute to the shear resistance. In addition to uh, stirrups, if we add some stirrups, then the stirrups will also contribute to the shear capacity. And guys, we went through the details, and by now you should be able to understand uh, that VC is function of concrete strength, and then the dimension of the, the beam, and then finally a number called the beta, which we'll get from the code. Okay, how about the steel? How about the stirrup? For sure, it uh, simply um, function of how many legs of uh, the stirrups and what is the diameter of the stirrup in addition to the concrete dimensions like the DV and then the spacing between the stirrups and then finally the angle of the crack as you will get from the code. So finally, here is our design equation. I will box this out for you. So this is our final design equation. OK, and guys, remember uh, to make our beam safe in shear, we have to ensure that the V sub R or the beam shear capacity exceeds the applied shear force. Of course, it's factored. Huh? Now, what we did so far is we quickly went through uh, the different uh, reinforcement option. We can use vertical stirrup or inclined. We can use bent bars or finally we can use welded wire mesh or fabric. However, uh, the most common one is a vertical stirrup. Also, we talked about uh, hook details. We can do 90 or 135 or 180. The most reliable one is 180, and the one you would like to avoid is 90 degrees hook. Okay, every hook comes with a different length for the hook. Also, we talked about several details of our stirrup. It can follow one of the following shape. Really, really, what I want you to, to understand is this one is a forbidden. This one here is forbidden details because simply it, is, it doesn't have a hook. And it does not really, uh, yeah, like, uh, doesn't provide a good detail. That's forbidden, huh? Now uh, we talked also about theta and beta, which we get from the code. And the thing is, uh, you have to do it this way. You have to ask yourself, does my element uh, subjected to or sub is subjected to a significant tension force? Uh, if, it, if it is subjected to significant tension force, then there is an exact method that you can find the theta and beta. However, all the elements in our class, like whether uh, beams or uh, beams or slabs, uh, uh, it is not subjected to uh, significant tension force, and that's why we don't need 11.3.6 or 11.3.6.4. So in our class, really what we have to understand 11.3.6.2 and this clause here gives you the value of the theta and beta for special member types and i can tell you those are slim members slim it means not thick not thick so slabs it is less than 350 mil and beams less than 250 mil in this case your beta is equal to 21 percent and the theta is 42 degrees. OK, now finally, what if I'm designing an element which is doesn't fall into one of those subcategories like A and B or C or D? What can I do? And remember, on the same time, it is not subjected to significant axial force tension. Then use this simplified method. The simplified method, it has some conditions 
which we went through last class in terms of F uh, prime C and F field. Uh, and those are applicable in my course. Huh? In my course, we're always using F field 400 and F prime C between 20 and 40, which means for sure those conditions are applicable. But the thing is, you have A and B and C, and A, it tells you your beta is equal to 18% if your concrete beam has a, a, a minimum uh, stirrups. And if the section of your beam doesn't have stirrups at all, zero stirrups, in this case, your beta, you can get it from this equation here to 30 over 1000 plus dV. Also, what we cover so far, we looked at code requirement. So the code has requirement uh, in terms of spacing between the stirrup and in terms of uh, the area AV, which is the area of a single stirrup. And also the code has some other requirement in terms of when should I add the minimum stirrup or where? And we went through this one. Uh, I'm going to spend some time because I need this today. Very important, huh? I want to remind you. So the code asks us to add stirrup in two cases. Number one, for sure, if your um, factored shear force exceeds your VC, it means concrete cannot do it on its own. It needs some help and this time to provide stirrup. Makes sense. But the other one is no matter what is the relation between VC and VF, if your beam exceeds 750 mil, then in this case, we will also have to add stirrups no matter what is the force. OK, guys, finally, this guy here, I said this is kind of one of the most difficult clause here. It's very tiny, but it's hard to explain. This one here, it asks you that the maximum VR should not exceed this number from this equation. OK, you can write down on this clause here. It prevents it prevents uh, brittle shear failure. It prevents brittle shear failure. I will go back to this today and give you kind of more explanation today with the numerical example, but not now. Guys, this is what we cover so far. And I know and I am I ask you for patience and I know it is so dry so far. Now it's time to make things a little bit better through numerical example. So I'm I have here I prepared the two numerical examples for you today. Uh, and uh, I think for the sake of time, I will just uh, probably give you the third one for you to um, uh, to read on your own because there's no sober science. You will just have to read read it, which, which was very similar to question or example number two. Uh, uh, but probably if we're able, if we're successful, probably today it's going to be our last uh, shear, like beam shear design uh, lecture. And uh, today probably if I'm able to finish, then I'm able to issue my assignment. And you guys know the rule, huh? it will be one week from my issue, the assignment. And I, I know that uh, probably I will push it to uh, Friday midnight, just usual, because I don't mark on the weekdays. So I mark only on my weekend. Does anybody have any questions so far before I give you our first numerical example in class today? Please speak up if you have any question. <clears throat> yeah, is this included in our midterm this coming Thursday? Uh, uh, Jilly, we've been together now in this class for uh, uh, 10 weeks and I already explained my, uh, my uh, uh, methodology. So I don't like to uh, examine my students on something that they never had like uh, something to do it with their own hands and get some feedback from me. And if you follow this, it means that this shear is not included because simply the deadline of the shear will be following your uh, your midterm exam, which means uh, the only thing I can test you is is uh, beam flexure design and slab uh, bending design okay. and shear as well. OK, okay. slab shear yeah. because you already by now you already finished the beam uh, design and bending and also the slab and bending and the slab and shear. Those are the three elements will be in your midterm exam. OK, that clear? 
Yeah, thank you. No problem. Anybody guys else has any other question? Um, sorry, how do we know the amount of um, syrup she put in the AP? That is the, that is a uh, toy. That's the discussion that we will have today. So at the end of the class today, if I'm successful to cover all the material, you will learn or supposed to learn uh, what should be the spacing between uh, the stir up to make your beam safe. <clears throat> Any other question guys for now? OK, so since we have no question, let's start. OK, as I said, guys, I have only two numerical examples for today. I'm going to start with the first one. It says example one, number one, and also it says a check. OK, so guys, if you remember uh, by now, you should understand the difference between design and check. Huh? Uh, the check, it means my beam uh, has been designed by somebody and it's for it. The, my job is to tell whether my uh, is that whether this design is safe or unsafe. That is the meaning of check. How about design? It means it means uh, it is my job to come up with the spacing and the type of the stir up that will make my beam <coughs> safe in shear. And this should be obvious because look at my screen. Uh, when you look at my screen, you can see on my screen there is a given section. And when you look at the given section, please all of you guys read this. How do you read this one? Does anybody can anybody help me? 10 M at the spacing 250 mm. OK, so guys looks like the this is the 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 call for the stir up and you can see if I zoom in the arrow is going to the stir up It's telling you this is a 10 M stir up and the spacing is 250. Now let me ask you, is that a design or a check? If the <coughs> you can see the stir up is completely defined. It means the shape of the stir up is defined. The bar of the stir up is defined and the spacing of the stir up is defined. You can see there are three different uh, elements in the design. Three things. Number one is the shape of the stir up because this will tell you how many legs which will affect the shear capacity. Number two is the bar like the bar diameter of the stir up and number three is the spacing between the stir up. Since all of those are known, it looks like that this is a check problem and it's not a design problem. <clears throat> OK, so uh, let's guys take your time, please. I'm going to give you a minute here until I get some water. My throat is getting dry, so please uh, read the problem uh, until I join you back. OK, guys, uh, let's let's go ahead and try to see the input. So the beam uh, dimensions are given 300 uh, by 500. Concrete cover is 40 mils clear. Uh, that's to the face of the stirrup. And then I have here at the the bars for the bending is 420 M. Then finally, my stirrup is uh, it looks like this, which is acceptable by the code. And the specification is two is uh, 10 M at 250 on center. Also in this problem, uh, we are given uh, the concrete strength 25 MBA. And those are kind of constant. Huh? We never change them in our course like the F field, the Phi C, the Phi S, and the Lambda. <clears throat> OK, and let's let's find what's the question. So the question here is determine like here is the question guys so to be clear so this is really what i want you to do or what we have to achieve in this problem determine the maximum shear force this beam section is able to sustain 
according to CSA 823.3. Okay. So I mean, in 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 plain English, it means tell me what is the beam shear capacity. Okay. What is the beam shear capacity? Okay. Now. So guys, to solve this problem, this is how we do it. Uh, if you remember, and I'm, I need to remind you, huh? Let's go back to our design equation. Need to remind you because simply the design equation will tell you what I need to prepare before I start calculation. It's over there, huh? So I'm going to zoom into my design, my design uh, equation, and let's see. Let me ask you, and I need somebody to help me. Do I have the phi C? Yes. OK, do I have the lambda? Yes. Yes. Do I have the F prime C? Yes. Yes. Do I have the uh, width of the beam? Yes. OK, do I have the phi S? Yes. OK, great. <clears throat> do I have the F sub Y, the F field? Yes. Yes. OK, now you can see um, still there are some parameters here and uh, let's see. Do I have the spacing between the steer up? Yes. Yes, I do have this the steer up. OK, now now guys, there are some stuff you will see we don't have. For example, if I ask you, do I have the beta right now? Now do uh, I have the beta. Do no. I know the beta? No, no. Do I have the D sub V? Is it ready for me right now? No. No, OK, so I'm going to probably need to make it sure, make, make it clear here. I'm going to put here a question mark so you guys can follow. OK, so I don't have the beta. I also I don't have the DV. It's not ready yet. And then I'm asking you, do I have the AV? A sub V? OK, <laughs> I know. I mean, I know you can get it from the from the from the uh, like the cross section, but let's say it is not known. We need to like ask ourselves like what is the what is the um, the A sub V? Mm -hmm. OK, and also you can see the DV is still the same. The DV is still the same, so it's over there here. We don't know. And then beta and theta, they come from the same place. Is anybody following guys? So the beta and theta, they come from the same place. That's from the code. DV we have to prepare and also the AV we have to prepare. Hopefully this picture is not confusing. What I'm trying to say here is that in the design equation, which will find for us the VR, there are some stuff that right away we can find, but there are some other things we have to work and find. So guys, the list is very clear. We have to find beta and theta. That's one group, and we have to find the D sub V and A sub V. Do you guys agree? Yes. I don't see any faces. Gord, do you agree? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> You make me happy. <laughs> Are you following or are you making me happy? <laughs> no, I'm following that. <laughs> OK, all sorts of stuff going here. Because I know that you're taking notes on the same time. You're listening. You're doing lots of things on the same time. And that's why I suspect that you're following me. That's why, because you're doing so many things on the same time, which is great. Multifunction. I'm just trying to keep up. <laughs> yeah, multifunction. OK, yeah, you know what? If you, if you guys feel, feel that I'm talking very quickly, please let me know because that's something I don't like about myself that I most of the time I tend to speed up and not slow down. So I mean, I mean, I, you can always stop me or slow me. I'm not going to be offended. Just say Tahir, that's very quick. OK. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, and uh, and uh, try to find those parameters that they are bending to find our VR. Uh, not very difficult. You will see, although the discussion looks the, looked very, very dry, but when you do the numbers, you will see uh, the shear design is one of the easiest designs. OK, now looks like we have to find our DV. And if you guys remember, DV is simply called effective shear depth, and it is related to uh, the dimension of your beam, the H and the D as well. So what we have to do is we need to find our D which is remember we have two things we have d and d sub v this d here it is not for shear this is what we used for bending that is called the effective depth now very simple it's the height of your beam minus cover minus the diameter of the stirrup 
and then minus bar over two because we have one layer of rebar. When you do all the math, you will find your D is equal to 437. And I guess that, you know, I think that, that I got this from the book and I know there is a 0.5 millimeter somewhere because simply there is a 25 over two and simply 25 over two, it is 12.5. So it looks like there is 0.5 millimeter lost somewhere. But please don't bother that's 0.5 millimeter. Huh? That is very, very tiny. We don't care this kind of accuracy. OK, next is once you know the D, then you have to do a couple of things. You have to find the 90 percent of your D and the 72 percent of H. Where Tahir got this one? Please review last two lectures. The effective shear depth. You find two numbers, 393 and then uh, 360. Remember by the code, it is greater of the greater of two numbers, which means it is going to be 393. And look, look at this. The book even doesn't care the three millimeter. The book went and said, OK, you know what? This is roughly a 390 millimeter. So ignore the, even the first the, uh, first number. OK, 390. So now here we go. We. We know or we got the 390. That's the uh, uh, effective shear depth. Next is we need to find the beta, the beta. OK, so guys, the beta, if you remember the beta, it depends on whether the, the beam has minimum steer up or it doesn't have a minimum steer up. And I know some of you may question, Tahir, what do you think? Is that 10M at 250 millimeter on center? Does it meet the minimum steer up? To be honest, I don't know. And this is something we have to check. Because simply if there are some steer up, but they are less than the minimum, it means we should use the other clause, which is 11.3.6.3 P. OK, so and, and you can see if you read my my lecture, you will see I said here this check. You can read here this check will be performed later on. So later on and. You can take a comment that this check whether the 10 M at 250 millimeter on center meets the minimum steer up requirement. I will do the check on this lecture, but later on. But uh, guys, I did this already and it is already it meets the minimum and because it meets the minimum steer up. Let's go back and read the code. Let's go back and read the code. So here is. Here is the code guys. So guys, I'm referring to here. Huh? If the section, if the section contains at least the minimum transverse reinforcement as specified by equation 11.1, beta shall be taken as 0.18 and the angle is 35 degrees. OK, you can see the assumption here is it meets the minimum transverse reinforcement and I will do the check later on. OK, now. So you can see here I picked beta is equal to 18 and on the same time theta is equal to 35 degrees and since beta is ready, let's go ahead and just use it in the equation. OK, so the equation is over there. Uh, this number is what concrete can take. Phi C lambda beta square root of prime F prime C multiplied by the width of the beam multiplied by D sub V. When you do all the math, you will find out that the V sub C is 68.4. Now let me ask you, is that the beam shear capacity? Please answer if you know. Is this no. number? OK, I want more guys more to contribute, please. Thank you, Julie, for contribution, but I need more voices. Hi. I'm asking you, is, is the 68.4? Excuse me? No, VCVS is right. Uh, guys, this is the contribution of the concrete only. And remember, my beam, it does have some steer ups, which means this is not our capacity yet. This only uh, one part of it. How about the other part? The other part is here, which is which we will do, will follow later on. So in the next so, part here, excuse me. It, sorry, just a quick question. Would V sub C only be the shear then for slabs, not beams? It is for concrete and 
it is for concrete, so that's how much concrete can take. OK, in slabs, it is right away. VC is equal to VR because we're not adding any stir up in slab in concrete because sorry in beams since we can add some stir up so we can bump up the VC with extra VS and the addition of both will give us our VR. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. OK, so uh, next is guys, as you can see, I'm trying here to find uh, the V sub S, which is the steel or the steer up shear resistance. Very simple, very, very simple. Number one, you have to find your AV. And as I said, AV, uh, you have to look at the section and ask yourself, what is my bar diameter? You're going to say, for example, in this case, 10 M. And you know the cross section of a 10 M is 100 mil square. And the next question is, how many legs do I have? Do I have my steer up? Is it one leg or two legs or four or whatever the number? OK, so in this case, which is the most common one, we have two legs, two legs. And all you have to do is you multiply two times 100, you'll get 200. So the AV is 200 millimeter squared. OK, the spacing is given. It is 250. And remember, the angle is the angle is 35 degrees. Where did I get this? This angle 35 degrees. It is from 11 uh, point 0.3, point 0.6, point 0.3. Because simply my beam is uh, is uh, 600 millimeter deep or sorry, 500, which means it's not a thin member. It is more than 250. Uh, so which means I cannot use uh, the special type members huh? because it's, it's, it's 500 mil which means we have to use 11.3, 0.6, Now, all you have to do is once you found all this information, use the equation for VS. I'm going to box this equation for you here. So this equation here, it gives you the steer up contribution. OK, now we can see. Uh, it needs for, from you the AV. It requires the F field of the steer up, the D sub V, the angle of the crack and then finally uh, the spacing. Something I need to just uh, remind you guys. Uh, cotan. Cotan. What is cotan? Cotan is the inverse of tan. Cotan, uh, cotan theta is the inverse of tan. I know that uh, most of the calculator they defined uh, the tan. So please, you can write the same equation. You can cross the cotan from here. And you can put it the tan here on the dominator down there, OK? Which is the same. Remember, cotan theta is the inverse of tan theta. OK, let's do it. So guys, when you put all those together, you can see here is my uh, my uh, VS. Remember, guys, something very important here, the units. The units is like it's very important. When you look at the units here, you will see everything is Newton. A millimeter, which means when I finish, I know that the number is in Newton. So you have to divide by a thousand. To get everything in kilo Newton. Now we know that concrete can do 68 point something. We've done this before here. Concrete can do 68 point four. Uh, the steer up can do 150 point five. So finally, if you want to know the beam capacity, it's as simple as no super science. Huh? We're going to add our 68.4 plus 151.5. And remember how much is V sub P, which is from pre-stressing? It is zero because our beam is not pre-stressed. You can see, guys, my beam can take to, can take up to 220 kilo. Newton, 220 kilo Newton. OK. Are you guys following? Is there any super science so far? No, we're good. no, uh, it's very simple. So the next part, guys, the next part is we need to check the code requirement. The next part is we need to check the code requirement and I will skip this one because I want to spend some time on this one. I'm going to go to the next one here, which is about the spacing. OK, so guys, I skipped this one already because I said that this clause is very short, but it's hard to explain. And remember here we are trying to ensure that the beam will not 
fail in a brittle mode. OK, so I'll come back to here in a few minutes. I'll skip this one. I'll go here because this one is very straightforward. So guys, we're trying here to ensure and make sure that uh, the beam not only safe, but also uh, but also meets code requirement. So let's check. So for the code requirement, the code has a, a saying on what should be the maximum spacing between the stirrups. If, if my calcs comes out to be that the spacing is 600 or 700, the code knows. So the code has a limit on that, puts a maximum spacing. How? Uh, if you guys read the last lecture, you can find this from the code. Very simple. It is the minimum of the maximum spacing. It's the minimum of 70% of D sub V or 600 millimeter. So 600, there's nothing can do. It goes again and then 0.7 times 390, you will get 273. Now, what is the maximum spacing? Can you tell me? I got two numbers, 600, 600, the and then 273. 273. So the maximum spacing is the minimum of those, those two numbers. huh? The maximum spacing between the stirrups, it is the minimum between the two numbers. And obviously the S maximum is 273. And there is, uh, you can see my spacing, the one I'm using in the problem, if you guys remember, it is 10 M at 250 mil on center, which means the 250 is less. It means it's OK because we are less than the maximum. Does it make sense? Yeah, the spacing in this problem is a 250 mil and the maximum spacing per the code is 273. It means we are below the maximum it means we're OK. So this we can say OK for this close here. Now the code also talks about something called AV minimum. And the AV minimum also it provides ductility of the failure. OK. The AV minimum maximum it provides ductility for the failure. So the code again, that's a, a kind of equation the code gave us. It says AV. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see clearly. So this equ equation here, it comes from the code, comes from the code. So AV minimum equals 0 0.06 square root of F prime C multiplied by the width of the beam, multiplied by the spacing, divided by F field. OK. Now, this equation here, guys, uh, I will show you. This is the way the code, the code does it. Uh, and in this example here, there is nothing. All you can do is just put the numbers. Huh? So 0.06 is just a number. So it goes here. Uh, our concrete strength is 25 MBA. Uh, the width of the beam is 300. The spacing is 250 and the F field is 400. OK, so how much do we get from this equation? We got 56.25. 56.25. Now remember how much was my AV? Two legs times 10 M, which is 100 mil square, which means my AV is 200. And remember, this is the minimum. Are we OK or not OK? That's the minimum. That's unlike the spacing. Huh? That's unlike the spacing. Hello, are we OK? Yes, we're OK. We're OK because our AV is 200 while AV minimum is 56.25. So we are well above the minimum and this also uh, this condition is met. But before I leave this one, there is a discussion here, guys, and let me ask you. I'm going to do something here and let me ask. I mean, tell me whether I did something wrong or not. Huh? I'm going to say here S equals S uh, minimum, sorry, S maximum equals A sub V multiplied by F sub Y divided by probably I'm going to use bracket. Huh? I'll use bracket. So A V times F sub Y divided by O um, another bracket. O point O six. Uh, multiplied by. Oh, 
FS. Uh, square root SQRT of F prime C. I think, and then uh, the, the width of the beam, huh? so that divided by B, and so this will give you. So I'm asking you guys, did I did did I do anything wrong? Like it's just reworking the equation one more time, rearranging the order of the equation. Do you see that? Like com I want you guys to take a to compare between the left equation, which is a v minimum equal to this equation, and then my equation in red. I haven't done anything. All I did is I I reordered uh, the or the terms of the equation. Can you confirm that, please? Yeah. OK, guys, so you can see I haven't changed anything. It is the same equation. However, I can tell you the equation on the right is more helpful than the equation on the left. And just remember that huh? we always in our design because remember it's the same equation, but it's a different formulation. I'm going to use the one on the right always because that one is the one on the right is more practical. And let's try to do it. Huh? I want somebody to help me with the numbers. Huh? So AV is equal to 200 multiplied by 400. So and then divide by 0.06 and then square root SQRT of 25, 20. which is 5, and then multiply it by, I guess, 300, which is the width of the beam. I need somebody to help me with the numbers. Huh? Eight hundred eighty nine. Eight hundred eighty nine mils. And yeah. guys, look at this, please. So you can see. Uh, guys, remember uh, the minimum area of steel corresponds to the maximum spacing. Do you see the, the analogy? The minimum area of, uh, of uh, stirrups corresponds to the maximum spacing between the stirrups. So if we're increasing the spacing, we're reducing the stirrups. Does it make sense if we're reducing if we're increasing the spacing between the stirrups? We're reducing the, the stirrups in our beam. All I'm going to say here for now is I always use in my design this S maximum here. And you can see it is the same equation, but this is more practical and you will see this when I do my design problem. You can see I'm still safe because my spacing is 250, which is way, way less than the spacing maximum spacing as per this equation. OK, now it's time to go back and uh, and then we simply explain this one and then we break. So guys, I already uh, discussed this before and uh, on a very high level, I said this condition from the code, what it does, it ensures that your beam is going to be. Uh, it's not going to fail in a brittle way uh, when it comes to shear. Now, I, I'll tell you how we do the check and then we'll explain in details. So very simple, uh, the, the condition here, it says your VR maximum equal to 0.25 times phi C, F prime C, BW, DV. So we already have all those numbers. Those numbers, all of them, they are available. And when you simply multiply, when you multiply all those numbers, then you get 475, OK? And now what happened is my VR that I got from VC plus VS, it is 220, OK? 220, which happens to be less than 475. And you can see the OK, it means we're OK. Now let me tell you, or let me ask you, let's say this is a beam, OK? Let's say this is a beam, OK? And uh, the beam, uh, when you found your VC, let's say we found the VC here is equal to 60, or let's make it simple, 70 kilo Newton. So concrete can concrete can take 70 only. OK, now how about I'm going to try several values for VF. Let's say uh, I need this beam to resist, uh, let's say 200 kilo 
Newton. So what happens here? I'm asking you if ma if this beam needs to resist 200 and concrete can take 70. So do I need stirrups? Yes, 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 you need. Now, what is what should be the share of the stirrups? 130. Exactly. So you can see here I'm going to put here 100, 130, 130 kilo Newton stirrup and simply you can size or know the spacing that gives you this 130. Now let's do another run. What happens if I'm going to, you know, I'm going to another run here. I'm going to bump this one to 400 kilo Newton. So now my beam is still the same, same beam. My beam is still the same. And but the force that I apply to this beam is 400. Can you tell me what should be the share of the stirrup? So, Four hundred meters. Four hundred meters. Yes. Exactly. Remember, this is constant, and then the share of the stirrup will be will be simply four hundred minus seventy. So this will give you three hundred thirty kilo newton. Let me ask you, which one requires requires more stirrup? The uh, 400 kilonewton. Of course, uh, because simply the share of the stirrup is increased, which means we need to add more stirrup. And you can see it goes along the same path if we keep adding rebar into our beam. If we keep rebar, remember a month ago when we add, when we exceeded row balance, what happens? Our beam will become overly reinforced. And when it comes overly reinforced, it means it will fail in a brittle way. Same thing, guys, here. If we keep uh, increasing the force and the beam section is the same, concrete contribution will be the same, no change. However, we will need more stirrups and more stirrups and more stirrups. And adding more stirrups, so much stirrups, what happens? Yes, it increases the capacity of the beam, but it changes the failure mode of the beam to brittle failure. So that's why the code puts this uh, condition here to kind of avoid compression, sorry, not compression, abo avoid brittle shear failure, which is very simple. All you have to do is you just have to make sure that the VR is less than VR maximum. So this is constant for the section. OK, you find this number as long as your VR or VF is less than VR maximum, then it's OK. You can find a certain amount of stirrup which will still fail in a flexible way. OK. How about if my VF or VR exceeds my VR maximum? What happens? It means let's, for example, let's look at this. Let's take another example. Let's say here my VF is, is equal to 600 kilonewton. Now, what will be the share of my stirrups? It will be 530 kilonewton. OK, so we'll keep adding, adding stirrups. And again, this will make our beam will fail in a brittle way. Guys, although the discussion looks very complicated, but the implementation is very simple. All you have to do is make sure that your VR is less than this number, VR maximum. And in this case here, it is less than VR maximum. But the question is, what happens if I do my calculation and it is not happening? Let's say this number here. Let's say this number is uh, 500. OK. If this number is 500, it means no, don't continue. It means this beam, yes, it's safe, it is safe, but when it fails, it will fail in a brittle way. So what's the solution? What do you think? What can I do to fix the problem? Do you see any space here to, to fix the problem? The math will give you the answer. Look at the equation and this equation will give you the answer. Mm -hmm. Looks like if the, if the 500 exceeds 4, 475, looks like I have to do something to increase this number to be on top of or over or more than 500. Anything we can do here to change and increase the V sub R maximum? Yeah, just increase, increase your speed. width of the beam. So yes, increasing the width of the beam will do it. That's correct. But is it only one thing, the width of the beam BW? Or there are no. some other things in the, the equation here? Force. We, can we, show, we cannot change VC. We cannot do that. Huh? We can't. Yeah. But F we can change C. F prime C. So F prime C for sure will bump up VR maximum. In addition to remember the D sub V 
is already related to the H and the D, which means increasing the H of your uh, the H of the the beam. Also, this will bump up or increase your VR maximum. So guys, here we have two option. one changing concrete dimensions and two changing concrete capacity. But the thing is, if this is happening, if your VR or VF is more than VR maximum, then stop, don't continue. Because simply if you continue and you found this much steer up, look at this, maybe guys, maybe this one here, maybe you will need 10 M at one inch on center, like steer up 10 M at one inch on center, okay? So yes, the beam will be safe, but the failure mode will be brittle and there is no conflict between them. Yes, my beam can still be safe, but it fails in a brittle way if it fails. Guys, are you following so far? Uh, I'll come back to this one, by the way, so there is another revisit of the same topic uh, one more time in the next part of the lecture. For now, do you have any question? Yes. OK, go ahead, Domenico. Um, I um, I just I might have got lost, but where did you find your AV was equal to 200 millimeters squared? Uh, it's it, you have to look at the section of your beam. Uh, the section of your beam is 10 M and it's two legs. So that's the section of my beam. It is two, 10 M diameter uh, okay, and okay. we have one leg here. Yeah. We have one leg here. So simply if you want to fill this beam, you have to tear this leg and also tear uh, this leg here. And that's why you have to tear an area of 200 mil, 100 here and 100 over there. Read, sure. read the lecture notes, read lecture notes. Thank you. OK, guys, uh, any other questions so we can break? Yeah, sorry. Can you go back to your S max formula that you made? Mm -hmm. I just I didn't get the last part. I just want to copy it down. It is it is one more time in the other part of the lecture, so you don't have to worry about it for now. It is available in my other presentation, so you don't have to copy it. It's available on. Available on it's over there, uh, but it's available also one more time on uh, my other lecture notes. Any other questions so we can break? OK, guys, so I'll see you guys 2.05, 2.05. Thank you.